up by uh, US 29 North, that will take me to I-70 and then 695 around Baltimore. I was just bringing out um, what positive things did I take out of my experiences with the Bureau of Witnesses religion for 25 years that I was involved in it with it. Well, first of all, I did engage in the public ministry work that they had. And yes, they are in that work promoting their religion mainly. What positive things did I get out of participating in that? Well, it opened me up to coming out of isolation and speaking with other people, random people. And even though I was promoting the religion itself by doing that, I in that ministry work contacted many, many people. I didn't always have doors slammed in my face all the time. There were many people that were needing somebody to talk to out there. Because I wasn't ever totally brainwashed by that religion, I put a lot of my personal touch into it. I didn't always strictly promote the religion when I was engaged in that work. I had many, many Bible studies with people, but on my Bible studies, I would not push the religion too hard itself. I would spend more of my time listening to people tell me about their lives. It became a listening ear to many different people, but they realized I wasn't going to try to force them to join the religion. Many people opened up to me and told me their all about their lives and I listened I gave these people a listening ear that they needed perhaps especially older people so yeah I would spend the Bible study covering some material with them but I never really twisted anybody's arm totally to join the religion, necessarily. If these people valued my time with them, I would continue visiting them. So this allowed me to develop a number of different contacts with people who had never had otherwise. Not only that, but they also taught you how to speak publicly as well. So I gained public speaking experience in that religion, even though I was under restrictions most of the time. I still could go up in front of everybody and give a five minute discourse. I still was permitted to do that. They critiqued you on where you could improve, what you could do, where you, your strong points are. So I did receive training in public speaking. And personally, I never really had a major problem getting up in front of people to do any of these discourses. I was comfortable with it. So it helped me become even more comfortable with it gain some experience in speaking in front of people. And it wasn't just a couple people, it was 
over 100 people in some cases that I spoke in front of, an audience of 100 or more people. Also, of course, persevering through the adversities that I described in my previous, some of them that I described in my previous videos. Those were some positive experiences that I, positive things that I took from that experience. We're now getting on US 29 North. Some rain falling. It looks like I'm probably going to have some showers this morning by the looks of it.
wore a full moon. And then I wrote, that um, I don't have it in front of me. I split down that it is a sharing of feelings and emotions and also a sharing of notions. But love is not being possessive or demanding. This keeps the affection for lasting. Then I wrote, Jealousy makes the violet petals grow nettles and the full moon's disk that disappear behind mist and the rainbow's beautiful shades fade away. I wrote, but true love is in bloom. There is return of the moon. And appreciation for nature's beauty. When you think about that poem. Yeah, I look back and I say, well, definitely God had something to do with that, the writing of it. It's definitely coming from him. Think about a violet petal, violet and blue. It's a beautiful sight to behold, for one. Something blooming means full expression, it means achieving our potential, we're in bloom with. Our beauty is fully visible. For others to be all in. We're in bloom, we're glow, we're achieving our potential. We're flourishing as a person. Think about a full moon. It lights up the night, it lights up the night sky, it provides light even in the darkness. It, 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 that also is a beautiful sight to behold a full moon or at night time or even coming up is. Obviously, if the moon is full, it's providing the maximum amount of light. So, a full moon, love being a full moon, it brings out things from the darkness, it makes things visible, even in the darkness of night. lights up things even in the darkness so that we can still see when it's dark and still can see where we're going. I know from experience hiking in Arizona desert at nighttime full moon still I was hiking in South Mountain Park near Phoenix it was a full moon that night. It got dark and I still hadn't gotten out yet to the park, so yeah, that full moon really made a difference. Been lighting things up, lighting the way for me. Then I wrote, 
sharing of, of feelings and emotions. And isn't that true? That's what it is. It's sharing with another person our feelings about things. And also our emotions, whatever they may be, emotions can cover a full spectrum of things that may not always be positive all the time.
Meaning that when we overcome that, what was described earlier of when the moon returns, we can find our way again. We can get back on the path we are on and continue our course in the right direction. That's for us. And then I put down appreciation for nature's beauty. And I came out at the very end. The last line of the poem was appreciation for nature's beauty. Even some of the things I described. Earlier in the poem, a product of nature, the moon, the full moon, the violet petal, the rainbow. It doesn't true love foster appreciation for these things. We have true love in us, we're going to appreciate nature. The beauty of it. I'm going to enjoy it. Um, which, when I wrote that poem, and I was in Vermont at the time, and I spent a lot of my time in Vermont enjoying nature. That state does offer a lot when it comes to nature, enjoying it. There are a lot of beautiful places in that state. One of the places there I was fascinated by in Vermont was Lake Willoughby. I was fascinated by that lake. When I went to college, wasn't that far, and there was a couple of occasions when I actually hitched a ride to that lake. I didn't have a car. And on one occasion, I actually thumped the ride to get to that lake because it was such a special place to be. Lake Willoughby. What made that place so special to me? The lake on two sides had high bluffs rising up, a mountain on each side of the lake. It was a beautiful, unspoiled natural area, and there were cliffs on each side of the lake. The two mountains had cliffs. It was a trail that went up both sides to the top. This area fascinated me. And I hiked up to the top of that on the east side of the lake on two different occasions. And the views of the lake were just magnificent from up top. It rises up over a thousand feet up over the lake. So that yes, that was and this this is the type of things that inspired me. To write that poem. Yes, at that time, I was very close to God. I felt very close to God being in that location. Because as I touched on, I really believe we are here to enjoy this earth, explore it, find joy in doing so. When I was in Vermont, even back then, I was only 18 years old, and I spent much of my time exploring the surrounding countryside. 
place that appealed to me there was Burke Mountain. I hiked up that mountain on several occasions. I would actually set out on foot and just walk in a straight line toward the mountain. It didn't matter what was in front of me. I, I did not follow any trail. I would just walk through pastures, ford creeks, and streams, and just keep walking in a straight line toward that mountain to see how close I would actually come to it. Just keep walking. I was like five miles away from the mountain, six miles away. I would just keep walking. It didn't matter what I had in front of me. I would set that mountain in front of me and walk toward it in a straight line. Did not follow any paths, not follow any roads. Over stone walls, over barbed wire fences, over everything you can imagine. I could. I was just going to follow a straight line to that mountain and then climb it when I got there. Right up it. Didn't matter if there was a trail or there wasn't a trail, I was going to climb it. And that was the sort of stuff that I did back then. country skis and in the winter time when there was snow I would just slap on the skis and just go off from skiing into the woods on my cross country skis if there was a lot of snow. Trail that runs through the 
state of Vermont. One end to the other, Haiti bordered them. The Massachusetts border. I had a mind hiking that trail, but never really got to it. Doing it. So that was, the reason why I'm bringing all that out was because that was the background of what inspired me to write that poem about love. That I entitled again, Love. Or 
is it acid? So life shouldn't be like acid. It should not be like harmful, like destructive. Acid is the way it's that it's not acid, meaning that it should overall be a positive experience for us go down this river. As with any river, there are rapids and falls. Which end up being learning experiences. But it's difficult to go down or fall or a rapid. It takes a lot of skill to do it without wiping out as we're going down it. It's not always pleasant to have to run a set of rapids. It's challenging. Down, um, I put down the deep piece of fulfillment galore when we get to the ocean. And I would think that that means that's when you merge back with God or Source, reach that ocean, and you know that you've accomplished everything in life that you wanted to. It's a sense of fulfillment. Accomplishment that you feel that you made it down that river and reached the end of that particular river and got to the ocean. So, yes, I believe that God helped me, inspired me to write that as well. A life. Even at that young age, I realized that life was like that. It, was, it had its challenges that were there for us to tackle. I also wrote a number of other poems at that period of my life. That I still have in a folder at home. Probably about 15 or 20 poems I wrote total. I did try to get those poems published in the college uh, newspaper, but I don't know, they wouldn't do it. They were not accepted for publication. I don't know why they weren't, but they weren't. And that was the only time I've ever actually tried to get these poems published in any way. I never really attempted after that and figured a college newspaper wouldn't publish them and who's going to. I mean, that's the way I thought back then. This is U.S. Highway 1 northbound, the pink dress out of Baltimore. And then I am going to stop at a Walmart and you can pick up some things in a little while. I'm not going to be right this moment, but when I come to it, there is a Walmart. But, um, yeah, I'm 
unfortunately the poems never were published. And I kind of gave up after the college newspaper wouldn't publish them. My thought on it was that well, you can't even get a call in the newspaper to publish the in the movie. He's going to want to. So I never really... Um, had them published or anything. They're in my collection. They're at home. I actually got on a typewriter and typed them all out. Most of them. back before cell phones, internet, when people would type things out on a typewriter. And I had a typewriter in my dorm room, so I typed out a lot of the poems.
back and forth ride through Maryland on US Route 1. It's northeastern and northeastern corner of Baltimore. Really, I think I've already talked myself out this morning. I more coming to my mind at the moment, so I would say and enjoy the view for now, unless something else comes to my mind to talk about.
now done. Last Highway 1 in Maryland. Now we're starting Baltimore. Gunpowder Falls State Park, Central Area. That's a beautiful place. Lots of people here in spite of the rain. Parking lot is almost full.
is that we have arrived at the Walmart. We're going to stop in here, pick up a few items I need. Thank you for watching.